Florida, the USA. Uh, tonight's a great night for me for a couple of reasons. First, because we get to celebrate the birthday of David McReynolds, who I consider one of the most important socialists in the United States in the 20th century. Uh, the second reason why it's a wonderful evening is I get to represent the younger generation of activists that were influenced by David McReynolds. And I don't get many opportunities to do that anymore, so it's a wonderful chance. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I'll, I was thinking of the title of my short speech tonight, and I came up with uh, How David McReynolds Saved Me from the Trotskyist. Which is a funny title. But, uh, in, in 2004, during the Republican National Convention, I participated in a panel with David. Uh, before the panel, I was out in the streets fighting the police, or more correctly, running away from the police. Uh, and it was a very wonderful moment, very energetic. And on the panel, David gave a very calm, reasoned presentation, in which he argued that what socialists are, are going to have to do is to defend a system of democracy that sometimes doesn't treat people very well. And that's going to be our task in the next four years under George Bush the second, if, if it happens. And I, I took a lot from that experience. Uh, and what I took most was this feeling, this calm, quiet sense in which he delivered his speech in a rational, reasoned way. And I remembered back to my experience in New Orleans in 2000 when I worked on a union organizing drive there. And I interacted with a lot of people that were involved in the civil rights movement. And I got the same kind of calm sense from them. Uh, that politics was a kind of long-term long struggle uh, and that you needed to be committed to kind of core values. Uh, so I got that sense just from that first interaction. Uh, the second moment I wanted to speak about was at a single payer demonstration that I helped to organize and David spoke. And Ralph Nader spoke before David and Nader gave a very good speech, uh, kind of in his typical legalese presentation. Uh, David spoke after him and David spoke about single payer and he said the government should provide access to care and the government should provide access to pharmaceuticals and everyone should have the right to go to the hospital when they wish. Uh, so a person next to me said, isn't he talking about socialized medicine? And I said, yes, he is. And they said, why doesn't he just say it? Because everyone agrees with them already. <laughs> he doesn't need to say it. This is what socialized medicine is and do you agree with it? Because he had already explained it and he already built some consensus from the crowd. Uh, and that had a very deep impact on me. Uh, the final experience, perhaps a little more humorous, came about a year ago when we organized a study group. And the study group was organized around David's pamphlet, The Philosophy of Nonviolence. And so I invited David to sit in on the study group, and he did. And we had a, a number of new members who hadn't met David before. Uh, so we started the discussion, and one person raised their hand right away and said, what the hell is this guy David McReynolds thinking about? And there he was sitting directly across. His head must be in the air when he wrote this thing. No regular worker would read this. And he went on and on for about 10 minutes, denouncing David in the harshest terms possible. And so after he was done with the denouncement, I said, I'd like to introduce you to David McReynolds, the author. And David could have attacked the person very harshly. But he didn't. He said, well, I, I wish you were there when I had written the pamphlet. It might have been very helpful. And it was a kind of way of disarming the crowd and not humiliating the person who was exposed. I, I, I took from that. But, but I wanted to mention also the pamphlet, which I don't think is here on the table. I didn't see it out there. Uh, the Philosophy of Nonviolence. You can get it through the Musty Institute. And I think it's a, a very important pamphlet for the democratic left going into the 21st century. Uh, and a couple of points that David makes that I want to highlight, and you see a lot of the quotations, some of them are from the pamphlet on the wall. Uh, the first thing he highlights is that, that there's an unfair cost of social change. And what he means by that, I think, is that uh, the people that are most oppressed are the ones that are going to have to create the liberation. And it's not fair that that's the case. Uh, and he writes that the good news is that social justice can be won, but at a very unfair cost. This is the beginning of wisdom for all revolutionaries, violent or nonviolent. Men won't liberate women, straights won't liberate gays and lesbians, whites won't liberate blacks, 
Capitalists won't organize trade unions. Militarists won't lead the disarmament movement. That is to say that some men or some whites won't be involved, that's not to say that some men or some whites won't be involved in struggles for liberation, but collectively, the British didn't liberate India, the Indians did. The whites in the South didn't end Jim Crow, the blacks did. Where there is injustice, God does not come down, wave her hands, and create justice. We do it where it doesn't get done. Thank you. 